Cymatics is the study of visible sound and vibration. By observing the effects that different vibrational frequencies have on physical matter, a complex array of beautiful and intricate geometric patterns and shapes are revealed. The higher the frequency, the more intricate the patterns become. As we delve deeper into the realm of cymatics, we discover the interwoven threads that connect sound and geometry, science and spirituality, and the universal laws that lie at the root of every religion. The patterns of creation, the healing power of sound, and the symbolic significance found in sacred texts all coalesce, allowing us to perceive the intricate harmony underlying our existence. One of the first people to seriously study wave phenomena was Ernst Kladny, a German musician and physicist in the 18th century. Kladny discovered that when he spread sand on metal plates and then vibrated the plates with a violin bow, the sand would mysteriously arrange itself into patterns. Depending on the vibration produced, a multitude of seemingly predetermined patterns were created. Kladny recorded an entire catalogue of these shapes, which today have become known as the Kladny figures. Deriving from the Greek word kaima, meaning wave, cymatics is a term coined by the physicist and natural scientist Hans Jenny. Simply put, it is the study of visible sound and vibration by observing the many forms of geometry, symmetry, and beauty that emerge through resonance in various mediums, it raises some very interesting questions about the nature of sound and form, and more broadly about the nature of reality as a whole. Hans Jenny expanded on the work of Kladny in the 1960s. He found that if you ran simple sine waves through a dish of water, you would see patterns in the water. Just like the Kladny plates experiment, different rippling patterns would form depending on the frequency. When we consider that our bodies are made up of about 70% water, we have to wonder what effect frequency and vibration may have on us. Furthermore, these patterns are repeatable, not random. And likewise, the higher the vibration, the more complex the pattern. Experiments like these illustrate how, at a fundamental level, vibration arranges matter into complex forms and shapes. Cymatic patterns like these are always present in some form when sound is present, though it is usually imperceptible to our eyes. By the method of capturing these patterns through a specific medium, like a fine dust on a vibrating plate, we can see the physical effects these frequencies have on matter. Spiritual traditions from many cultures around the world speak of sound as being responsible for the creation of life. It has been said that everything owes its existence solely and completely to sound. In the Bible, John tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word, or sound, appears to be synonymous with the creative force, that being God. God said, let there be light. One could say that reality itself is the cymatic manifestation of God. In the original translation of the book of John, it is said that in the beginning was the Logos, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus, who lived around 500 years before Christ, referred to the Logos as something fundamentally unknowable, the origin of all repetition, pattern, and form. The Stoic philosophers who followed the teachings of Heraclitus identified the term with the divine animating principle pervading the universe. It is in the oldest Hindu scripture that we find the most sacred of all sounds, the primordial Om. This is one of the most important symbols in Hinduism and Tibetan Buddhism. According to the Upanishads, it is the sound of creation and the essence of the Supreme Absolute. At the dawn of creation, this harmonious sound was the first thing to emerge from the emptiness. 
physics theorizes that the universe all started with a big bang. That the physical universe spiraled out of an unimaginably hot and dense single point called a singularity, billions of times smaller than the head of a pin. The why and how of this event remain unanswered. Somewhat remarkably, the sense of hearing sound is one of the earliest senses to develop in utero, forming at around 18 weeks. What's more, many doctors and hospice workers have speculated that in the final moments of life, our senses depart one at a time, with hearing being the last to go. What cymatics demonstrates is that sound creates form. Everything vibrates, either in resonance or dissonance with nature. The patterns and structures that are created using sound are seen in many forms throughout nature and the environment. The symmetry, fractals, spirals, waves, and other ordered patterns of nature seem to allude to a profound interconnectedness and some underlying principles or universal laws governing the organization of the world around us. The head of a sunflower, the shell of a tortoise, the spotted hide of a leopard, the songs of whales and dolphins, the hexagonal cells of the honeycomb, and the phylotactic spirals of aloe plants. Nature doesn't have to consult the physics or math departments to learn how to arrange itself these ways. It just does it, automatically and repeatedly. Throughout history, many philosophers, astronomers, and polymaths have attempted to understand the inherent musical quality of the universe. In the teachings of Pythagoras in ancient Greece, this was known as the music of the spheres. In this philosophical framework, the movements of the sun and celestial bodies all carried specific tones, expressed in their orbits, angles, proportions, and shapes. The cosmos and its contents harmonizing to create the musica universalis, literally universal music. Many thinkers in the school of Pythagoreanism suppose that, given the fact that on our planet, the movement of bodies creates a noise, then it seems reasonable to assume that, given the immense size and speed that celestial bodies move through the solar system, that they should each possess their own sound as well. The 16th century astronomer Johannes Kepler built upon this idea many centuries later. However, he did not believe that the movement of the celestial spheres created an audible sound. Rather, it was a harmonious symphony of tones that could be experienced by the soul. Kepler believed that man was the imitator of the creator, and asserted that there is a link between musical harmonies and the harmonies of the cosmos. Man participates in musical expression to emulate the music of the heavens so as to enjoy the timeless duration of the world in a fraction of an hour. Just as the music of the spheres alludes to an underlying pattern of harmony, a purposeful order to the universe, so too does cymatics verifiably demonstrate this. With an open mind and curiosity, we realize that cymatic patterns, nature's affinity for spirals, and its love of fractalizing itself have been an inspiration for us for ages. This stuff is everywhere if we are willing to see it, and it makes it seem as if some divine intelligence has placed hidden messages within itself in the hopes that we might realize it someday. For example, from the vantage point of Earth, if we observe and plot the path at which the planet Venus soars through the sky over a period of eight years, we find that it will create a five-petal flower, or pentagram. This form is reminiscent of a pattern that 16 hertz might create in water. For millennia, ancient Eastern traditions have recognized that everything is vibration. The concept of Nada Brahma elucidates the notion that the universe itself is sound. Nada means sound or vibration while Brahma represents the divine. Brahma encompasses both the universe and its creator, existing as an inseparable unity. 
like an artist and their creation, they are indivisible. Within the Upanishads, it is said that Brahma the Creator, sitting on a lotus, opens his eyes and a world comes into being. Brahma closes his eyes and a world goes out of being. You are the you in universe. You are the creator witnessing its creation. When you awaken from a dream, you realize that it was all you. You created that. Real life is no different. Thanks for watching.